Okay, so hi, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Thomas, and I'm going to be talking about making servers gossip. I'm a third year computer science student, and I have like, uh, like rough interest in distributed systems. I overheard a rumor that the Computing Society is giving free pizza during Friday night gaming this week. And this was some random computer science student. If we were to look at this from like the top of campus and you could see everyone speaking with each other, we would have something like a graph, right? So each node is just a person and we have the freshers marked as green nodes and the node at the bottom or the person is the first person who overheard the rumor. This person will have some friends, even though some people don't think computer science people have friends. Uh, and he will, they will try to talk about it with other people. We can keep going. Each person speaks with another two people. So from one interaction, we've gone from a single person knowing about it to seven. If we keep going, eventually, um, all of the first years knew about the UWCS rumor. When Friday Night Gaming came, uh, thousands of freshers showed up and demanded the free pizza. And the Computing Society went bankrupt. They had to order lots of Domino's pizza. And so the student union put the treasurers behind bars and they prohibited buying pizza for any society from now on. But what does this have to do with uh, computer science or distributed systems? So this is actually what we call a gossip protocol. And this is inspired by human gossip, so how we communicate in a society, how rumors spread like the one we just saw, and also epidemics. So if you had coronavirus, it's a very recent example, uh, one person will get infected, and then you get like two other people that are infected and you start spreading like very quickly in a more like scientific context, so we can use it to spread data among like a group of servers. And so before we get into more details, I just have like some terminology. This like group of things that we have of people or servers, whatever you have, this is called the overlay or uh, the topology. And the topology is, you know, how the nodes are like located. You might have some that are like connected if maybe people know each other or they spoke with each other. And in literature, you also see the name peer to denote a single like person or server. So the way a gossip protocol actually works is a bit different from the way we gossip as humans. So the first thing we need to look at is the fan out. It's essentially how many people you speak with. We have one initial person that knows about the rumor, that's the green dot. And we will just pick any three peers in our cluster or topology or whatever you call it. And we're going to spread that rumor. If we go forward, we tell three other random people, it doesn't matter if they already know about the rumor or not, and we'll see why this is important after. We just go up to them and tell them that the computing society is giving away free pizza, and other three people that know about it, and total four. So this finishes the first round. In the second round, we again select three random nodes or whatever our fan out is. So I'm just picking here any three random nodes. We have two that don't know about the gossip yet, and another one already knows, that's totally fine. This is like uniformly distributed, so you just pick completely random. There's equal chance of picking any node. And you can spread the gossip even more. But now, you also have the other three nodes that you infected initially with that gossip, who can also spread the rumor. And we would go around within the same round and do this for every uh, node in our topology. It turns out that this is actually quite scalable. So we can define the number of rounds that we need to spread the information throughout our cluster in terms of the number of nodes that we have. And that's actually logarithmic. So we have around, I think, eight nodes. And if we do the calculations, we get about 1.89, which is just two rounds to spread around eight nodes. But in a real world example, you'd have like thousands of servers and you want it to be scalable. So if you're a big social network, maybe you have an influx of users and you want to add more servers in your data center, so you need it to, be, to scale well. Uh, so if it's logarithmic, it's very easy to scale it up. We also only gossip with a fixed number of people or servers. So 
we don't need to send the same message to everyone. We just pick any like four random nodes, we send a gossip, and then we continue. And no recovery action is also taken. So we could do this over either UDP or TCP. For those that are not aware, UDP doesn't have any like reliability mechanisms built in. So if you send a message, it's like a, an unregistered letter. You send it, and then you don't know if it arrived or not. And TCP gives you like a uh, like the signature of the receiver. We don't need to use any of that in gossip. We'll see that some protocols use that, but you could just do it over an unstable network. Uh, you could use UDP, that would be completely fine. The other advantage is this is actually uh, provides us with fast convergence. So convergence just means if we get a new piece of data, we can spread it very quickly throughout our entire uh, cluster. So in the other example, we had a free pizza, and we very quickly spread the rumor that there was free pizza during Friday night gaming. This is exponential, right? So for every person, you have another two people who can uh, spread the gossip even more. And this is what we call eventually consistent. So if you have something that you need to be always accurate when you read that data, this is probably not what you want. But if you have some data that you don't care if it's a bit outdated, but you know that eventually you'll have the, the accurate data, this is fine. So while it's spreading, you might not have the same information everywhere, but eventually you'll have the same thing everywhere. It's also very decentralized. So there's no centralized like database or server. You don't need to have you don't have a single point of failure. You have like thousands of nodes that are running the exact same software with uh, maybe slightly different data, but they're running the same thing. So if something goes wrong, like if we have a few nodes that go bad, like you have a disk failure or just the data center went down for some reason, you can just replace them and it should behave as usual. You won't have any problems uh, continuing spreading. It's also fault tolerant. So if for some reason one of the messages doesn't arrive, and this is the point I was touching on before, so if we use UDP and the message doesn't get delivered, so imagine someone is a bit skeptical and doesn't believe the computing society is doing free pizza again, and so the message doesn't arrive through the freshers. This is fine. So the initial graph that I actually showed you isn't complete. What would actually happen is some of the other freshers would eventually maybe talk with other freshers and spread the message even more. So even if the message doesn't arrive, you have like multiple paths for the data to arrive. So when you're running a big data center and you have like thousands of servers, if something goes wrong, that's fine. You have some time to like replace it and the data might take a bit longer to spread, but eventually it will arrive everywhere you need it to. It's also robust, but not always. We'll see uh, an example of when this is not very robust. We can change our topology, and it continues working fine, uh, so we don't need to register a new server anywhere. We just add a new server, depending on the protocol. Maybe you, you tell someone, uh, hey, I want to join this group, this topology, and the protocol should work just fine. So if there's more freshers, we can just add them to this um, computing society cluster. And also, if one of the freshers or one of the computer science students leaves the computing society, that's also fine. Uh, we can eventually get the details of that person, and the data will continue spreading. There's a real-world example that I want to talk about that touches on why it's not always robust. So Amazon has a service called S3. And Amazon S3 is just a scalable service for like file storage, they call it object storage. So it's essentially just a disk in the cloud, but you don't worry about the file structure or directories. You just have a file that's an object, and then you have some data, like maybe you store the name, or when the file was created, things like that, some metadata. And they actually use a gossip protocol to spread some like information about their servers, maybe how long the server has been up for, or what files it has, things like that. And they use that to spread it among their cluster because it's very scalable. But in 2008, they had a big loss of availability because one of the states in a server got corrupted. So a single bit maybe was flipped during transmission or something like that, and the message was still readable, but the state was incorrect. So because gossip spread so fast, this actually worked a little bit against them. So what you had was something like this, where you have this like, malicious or uh, flaky person uh, or server who had a bad state. 
And so you just start spreading that, right? Because for the server, that's just a normal data that you want to share. So what happened is you got more, server, more and more servers that got infected with that bad state, and things started crashing and going down. So they had to go manually and update the state on disk and then reboot everything and get everything up, and it took like six hours in total. Uh, I've linked on the presentation the post-mortem, so their report on what went wrong if anyone is interested. So this showcases one of the issues with gossip protocols. If you want some extra reliability, you'll need to add uh, some hashing or some checksum to see if your data is actually valid. This is called a, a Byzantine fault. So Byzantine faults are issues that don't bring your system down to a halt uh, or to a full stop. Uh, they might go unnoticed and the server doesn't know what's going on. Uh, they could be caused by malicious nodes, so you could imagine um, a state-sponsored actor trying to set a, like an infected software on the server and then spreading it around, or just a flaky server, so in that case we just had a bad state that got spread around. And This is a, a whole big area of research alone. But there's one issue that we didn't really touch on. So I told you that we pick some random servers to spread the gossip around, but how do we actually know who to speak with? So in real life, a list of contacts or uh, you just know people, right? So we could keep track of everyone, but this is actually uh, not a great idea. This is called, uh, oh, horrible. So this is linear, which for an algorithm was probably not that bad, but this is not scalable. So if gossip is scalable and then you need to keep track of every server, that's not very useful. You're not using its strengths. And it turns out that it's actually quite hard to keep track of which servers are up. So if you only have one Raspberry Pi and your laptop at home, it's probably very easy. But if you have thousands of servers, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out which servers went down, which are backup. You have thousands of them, so it's really hard to keep track of this. So there's a paper called Hyperview. And this is called a membership protocol, so it's just a way of handling uh, the contacts that we're going to speak with and spread the gossip. And this stands for a hybrid partial view. We'll see why now. So this is again inspired by human nature a little bit. So what they do in this protocol is they keep two views, and it's very similar to what we do as humans. You probably have your close friends and family around you, and those would probably be the first people you speak with. But then, you also have uh, acquaintances, so people you roughly know that you might speak with eventually, but you won't necessarily speak with them directly. And they use this to keep a limited view of the nodes in your cluster, so you only keep like five uh, friends and family and five acquaintances, and you start spreading around using gossip the servers that you have in your contacts list using like a random shuffle or other things. And this turns out to be very scalable. This is uh, logarithmic, it scales with log of n. And it offers very strong resilience, so if you have servers that go down, you can have, uh, according to the authors, as much as 90% of your servers going down, and your data will still spread just fine. And it takes advantage of TCP, so this allows you to figure out more easily whether a server is down or not. So you send a message, if you don't hear back, you know, okay, something went wrong, I might try again. And then if it fails again, okay, this server is dead, it's not working, I'm just going to replace it with an acquaintance or something like that. Another thing that I wanted to look at before we finish our talk, initially we just had these nodes, but certain types of uh, membership protocols can lead to different results. Some are random, some just pick the latest ones that you've received, things like that. And can anyone think about why, if you had something like this, this is called a star graph, and you have the, the edges just represent whether or not the, they can speak with each other. Does everyone know why this might not be desirable to have on a cluster? Yeah, so if, if something goes wrong with the middle peer, then they can speak with each other. You, can't, you don't have any resilience if it goes down. It's like a single point of failure. So you have to play around with your membership protocols. There's loads of different uh, protocols published online for different use cases, and sometimes you have to choose the one that's best for your use case. This is called the lattice ring. And if you look at the edges that we have, even if a node goes down, 
you always have like a backup connection. You still have an edge connecting the two most adjacent nodes, and it can still spread around. And the nodes are still very close to each other, so you still have a very short path length to spread your nodes more, uh, your information more quickly. This can be used for different applications. Uh, you can use it for cluster membership. So there's a very popular database called Cassandra. And Cassandra is a distributed database, so it's, you have like different copies of the software running in a load of different servers. And you need to keep track of the servers that you have so you know where data is stored and things like that. So they just use a gossip protocol under the hood to spread uh, which nodes are part of the cluster. You can use it for failure detection. So maybe you have a critical service and you want to know whether or not things are going down or not. You need to make sure that they're up. You can use it for failure detection. There's a very interesting paper on using this for distributed learning, for training machine learning models. You can use it to compute aggregates, things like sum or averages uh, among like, loads of servers, so you can process a lot of data very fast. And you can also use it to just disseminate any data. So CockroachDB, which is also a very popular database, uses this to spread some data about their database among their servers in the cluster. This mostly finishes my talk. I've added some resources if anyone is interested in this. Uh, it turns out that Gossip protocols are actually very simple to implement. You could probably do it with a few hundred, less than like 300 lines of code. There's a few examples online. There's even some in Rust. I know a lot of people are interested in Rust. There's also uh, an F# -sharp blog where they implemented in uh, F# -sharp, the Hyper-V membership protocol. And there's also some papers that just show some like interesting graphs on how quickly information spreads depending on your membership protocol. Yeah, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions now.